Jack Boala, Fatsi Regun, I'm the North Texas Chair of AMPA, Association of Nigerian Physicians in the Americas, and I also serve as one of the physicians at MacArthur Medical Center, serving Irving, Texas. Hi, Dr. Viterian. This month is sickle cell disease. We appreciate you educating us about this important health condition. What is sickle cell disease? So sickle cell disease is an inherited um, blood cell disorder, uh, specifically red blood cell. So in your, in your body, you have white blood cells to help prevent infection. You have platelets to help prevent injury, to help you to heal. And then you have red blood cells, which supply oxygen throughout your body. And a person without sickle cell disease, their red blood cells are perfectly round and flexible. They can move through the body without any issues. A person with sickle cell disease, the red blood cells are sickle or crescent shape, given the name of the disease. And they have problems um, traveling through different sizes or different blood vessels of different sizes. So it can really impact your major organs. It can cause uh, problems involving swelling in the lower extremities and the hands. It can cause organ damage to your kidneys. It can cause stroke. It can cause heart disease. So it makes a major impact, especially people uh, with ethnic connections to Africa, the Middle East, the Mediterranean Basin, and, and India. How is sickle cell disease diagnosed? It's really easy to diagnose. It's a simple blood test. It can be done at a lab or even at a point of care center. Um, in more developed countries like the United States, um, we do screenings on newborn babies as part of the state's newborn screenings uh, program. Um, that way you can identify a person or a baby with, with sickle cell disease um, right within a few days of life, even a few within a week maximum. In other parts of the world, particularly Nigeria, um, I've heard there's certain hurdles in terms of trying to get a program that can uh, do the same thing and get the same results. What are some health interventions used to treat sickle cell disease? So uh, initially, especially if you identify a baby um, within a few days of life, the easiest intervention is um, giving penicillin, which is an antibiotic cured toward preventing infections. When you have sickle cell disease, you're, you're predisposed or vulnerable to certain bacterial uh, bacteria that's in the community. Things like strep, things like staph, um, those can predispose a person with sickle cell disease to very serious problems and hospitalizations. The other things we try to do um, is give immunizations to help prevent those types of infections. Um, more heroically, um, there's um, blood transfusions. So remember, the disease hinges around those bad red blood cells. A blood transfusion from a healthy person into a person with sickle cell disease can help alleviate um, their symptoms. Um, and finally, the, probably the most heroic is a, is a bone marrow transfer uh, or bone marrow transplant. Um, basically, it kind of just resets the blueprint of how your body produces red blood cells. Are there medication used to treat sickle cell disease? Yes, there's a few different medications that have been shown to help. One is called hydroxyurea. Those, uh, that, if it's taken regularly, it's been shown to help uh, lower the instances of hospitalizations, lower the instances of pain crises, and uh, lower the need for blood transfusions. Um, another one is something called folic acid, which is a type of vitamin. The, your body uses folic acid to make red blood cells. So if you give that um, medication to a sickle cell disease patient, um, they can hopefully uh, help produce more red blood cells. Um, other diseases that are, are a little bit, or sorry, other medications that are a bit more newer are Endari, which is given to kids five years of age and older, and another medication called Oxbrita, which is approved down to um, patients 12 years of age and older. Can sickle cell disease cause certain stigmas in patients with sickle cell? Yes. So the ma major stigma that a lot of kids uh, here in the United States get is that, um, so when you have sickle cell disease, 
you're really incapacitated with crises, frequent hospital stays, frequent absences from school. So they sometimes, unfortunately, get the reputation that oh, these kids are lazy, um, but when in fact they're they're trying to, to do their day to day um, activities with like half the red blood cells that the, the regular population will have. So they're often fatigued. Um, they miss school because they're often in the hospital needing blood transfusions. So unfortunately, um, people looking in from the outside don't realize uh, their health uh, issues and then they think, oh, they just miss school because they're truant or because they're lazy, don't like school. Culturally, um, when you have a pain crisis or you have a patient with sickle cell disease, um, they could be in a lot of pain. Uh, oftentimes, uh, they're hospitalized. Oftentimes, they can have strokes. So in Nigeria and other countries, a lot of times, they will blame this on being cursed or uh, having witchcraft done against them. Um, obviously, it's a medical condition. It's not a, it's not, has nothing to do with, with black magic or anything. But culturally, those kids can be shunned. Even when they get older and it's time for marriage, they have something called marriage rejection. Um, so the stigma is so impactful that uh, you have people in that same community who want to reject those, those individuals just so that they fear that the curse will follow them. What is the mental health impact of sickle cell disease? So anytime you're battling something like sickle cell, it's almost like uh, a day-to-day -day, uh, battle. In Nigeria, they call patients with sickle cell uh, warriors because they're frequently um, feel like it's a life and death situation. Um, but more than that, the mental health issues are that they're constantly having a pessimistic view on life. Um, they can often have anxiety. They can often have depression. Um, so it takes a community to help kind of deal with those those issues. So we like to reach out to school officials to make sure proper accommodations are given to kids growing up. Um, and also we like to look out, uh, reach out to our religious leaders to help kind of dispel some of those myths about uh, witchcraft and sickle cell disease. Thank you, Dr. Viteri. You're welcome. In closing, I would say some things that you can do if you're living with sickle cell disease is to hydrate. Um, so drink plenty of water, eat a balanced diet, with, with a lot of grains, fruits and vegetables, um, and take your, your vitamins.